Hello, everybody. This is Jake Sunzano, host of Jake and Gino Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father, six, the best line author, the G Daddy, Gino Barber. Gino, how's it going? Jake, I'm doing good. You're looking good in the Sherpa today. You changed up the wardrobe. Mm. How you doing, brother? Mm. Always making it happen, big man. Thanks for recognizing. You know, the Sherpa is my my jam. Looking good. I know I'm looking good today. But anyways, we have a very special guest today. Today's guest is a real estate maven hailing from Spain. I think it's the first time we had someone from Spain on the show. Do you know this is interesting? Uh, she spent her childhood absorbing real estate by watching her father. Later, she earned a master's degree in law, specializing in alternative dispute settlement. Not practicing law anymore, so we allowed her on the show. We typically don't allow lawyers on, but it's okay. We've we've uh, kind of made sure everything's okay today, so we're, we're there. Uh, today, she is a multifamily real estate expert with the agency Beverly Hills. So without further ado, Barbara Isabel, welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. How are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Uh, really happy you got out of the the legal side of things, and you know you're just coming into you know the world of real estate. So please share with us your your background a little bit more, and uh, ultimately how you you made that full transition into real estate. Yeah. So I was uh, born and raised in Madrid, in Spain. Um, I moved to LA about eight years ago, just under eight years ago. Um, I was really thinking about coming to you know to LA with my master's degree, and then you know going back to Spain. Uh, there is no other place in the world like Spain. Um, but what is it? What is it that makes Spain uh, unlike anywhere else? Food, quality of people, quality of life, lifestyle. Um, so many things that go in the day to day life. Uh, you know, like 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 people being more genuine. Uh, people, you know. Well, you're want- in LA. I mean, of course, it's going to feel like that. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, pretty much. And then, you know, again, in Spain, like there's there's a saying here, like you know, if if you are from Europe or you know Spain, like you know, the question is like, hey, what's your name? Like, you know, where are you from? Here is like, hey, what do you do? Mm. So you know, that's that's just the intro question, and that, I think that explains it pretty well. Uh, you know, I've never heard that people. before, but that says a lot. Oh, it, it definitely it's definitely true. You know, it's also, oh, so what do you do before they even ask your name? It's what can I get from you, Barbara? <laughs> yeah. What can you get from me? Real estate advice. That's what you can get from me. <laughs> 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 She's transitioned really well, Jake. She's picked no up shit. the American vibe real quick, brother. <laughs> LA, LA would jade you quickly, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There is no, this is not a playground. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you got you to gotta catch up to it. So I moved here. I did my Master of Law, and I started practicing law at a law firm in Century City, Greenberg, Leicester. Uh, you know, real estate department. It was nice. It was great. Uh, very couple, you know, nice high-end clients. Uh, the law firm made, you know, significant money with those two clients, and I received the two thousand dollar bonus. So I got very discouraged with the whole thing. <clears throat> Realized that, you know, in the law career here is very corporate. Um, so you know, I, I had a very outgoing personality. You know, I grew up uh, with my father, you know, shadowing his business, uh, the business of construction in Spain mainly. Uh, but he used to also build uh, hospitals in South Africa and Botswana. So I used to go to South Africa every summer. So, you know, it was just kind of like part of my day-to-day life. Never really thought about pursuing it um, till I met another developer here in LA. And, uh, you know, old guy in his 90s, very well known in Beverly Hills. And he was like, hey, like, have you thought about doing something else? I can see you, you know, killing it in a different sector. And I was like, well, you know, I've already done eight years of law between my undergrad, my grad and everything. He was like, well, you know, I, I think it would be good good chance for you to like succeed if you were to like do something real estate and i was like hey, you know my, my concept of real estate was like the, the reality tv shows you know i don't want any anyone getting into my personal life i'm a businesswoman that's you know what i want to do uh i got approached to do some reality tv before in real estate but you know i just don't like the drama aspect of it um i like the drama aspect of my business you know dealing with tenants evictions squatters uh, police like all those fun stuff that comes with doing real estate development um, and then eventually got into real estate, started cold calling, got some high end listing. Uh, every time I got a listing appointment in person, I closed the listing. So I was, you know, kind of very encouraged by that, uh, especially because of my accent and my look. I look young. Uh, and especially back then, six years ago, I was, what was I, six years ago, 26, 25. So everyone thought I was 12. They were like, do you even know LA? Like, <laughs> where do you come from? Um, but I got comfortable well, in, in the uh, apartment space too. There's not a, a, a ton of women, at least in it, I think there's more today than there was 10 years ago, but, uh, you know, it was pretty male dominated for a, a long time. And, and it's you still know. to date, I would say it's yeah. still to date. It's not, it's not really, I mean, again, it depends on how you approach your business, but on a day to day basis, it's not a fun business to be in when it comes to development, you deal with a lot of, you know, nasty contractors, 
and they get nasty. They get in your face. They don't care whether you're a girl or not. So, you know, you just have to have a little bit more thick skin. Really? I haven't, I haven't experienced that in my life. So that must just be an LA thing. They're, they're, they're meaner on yeah, the West I Coast. Mean, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they, they really get in your face, but you know, again, you Chivalry just have to stay dead. in your lane, you know, you just have to stay in your lane. You just have to like, you know, remember why you're doing it. Again, the money is good, but if you're not passionate about what you do, it's very difficult to to be in this business 365 because this is a 365. The buildings are going up, uh, you know, the, the AC breaks down, there is a leak. You have to, you know, you have to really monitor all your projects, or at least I do. So I'm not like, you know, the standard traditional realtor. I sell you the deal, make my money and, you know, be out of the deal. Um, I help my clients from A to C, you know, planning uh, with permitting, planning, uh, you know, shutting off water meters. Uh, if there's squatters in the property, making sure that they don't establish a home. So I call the police, uh, you know, try to get them out, negotiate cash for keys, all those fun things, you know, that are going to development. So you ever just chase them out yourself? Yes, I have. Yeah. Nice. That's, I've that's done it a couple right times here, and it reversed on me both times. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been advised not to please not do that by the police a couple times already. They are like, you know, I mean, I understand that you feel very strong about yourself, but these people don't care. Like, you know, they, 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 they may have a knife, they may get aggressive, you know. Um, so, so you know, just, I, I guess, learning as I go, you know. One more difference between L.A. and Tennessee. They come at you with a knife, we come at you with a gun. And that's that's the reality. The reality is, come well, and bring it. You charge a gun when you run from a knife. <laughs> uh -huh. Isabel, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, my parents, my family's from Italy. I, I get a little insulted when you say Madrid is the best place in the world to live. I would, yeah, I would venture to say, I would venture to say Italy. I did say Europe, though. No, I did say Europe after I said Spain. I okay, say <laughs> I missed that. I, 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 and I listen, it, I've never been to Barcelona. I've, yeah, I've never been to Barcelona. I've never been to Madrid. Uh, I've been to Italy. 20 times. I mean, I just went there back in August. And honestly, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. It's one of the most amazing places to live if you have money and you can afford to live there. What did your parents, your father say specifically when you said, Papa, no vemos. Yo tengo andar en América. Tengo andar a trabajar ahí. Ciao. What did he say to you? Because that's something where your, your family, the family life in Europe is really, is really strong. The roots are really strong there. What did dad say to you? Well, I always wanted to do a master's degree in mm -hmm. the United States of America. You know, that was like just a dream that I had. You know, I guess like growing up, my mom like always, you know, admired America and the culture. And, you know, as you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of like big companies came out of here. So, you know, I always had like this idea of the States being, you know, a completely different world. Even though I traveled a lot, you know, I traveled throughout Europe, South America, Asia, you know, I grew up traveling. So, you know, I have no, no complaints when it comes to that. So I knew there was a whole world out there, but we just never made it to the States with my dad because he didn't speak English. He was old as You know, I was the seventh of eight kids. So he was more of an older dad. And he just, you know, had no interest in the States. Like, what's there to see? You know what I mean? So I always <laughs> had that dream of, hey, I really want to explore that part of the world as well. So I didn't choose LA. I chose the university. So Pepperdine University for uh, 12 consecutive years at that time. Now I think it's like 17 years in a row. Uh, they were known for being the best at having this alternative dispute settlement. So basically for me, I was fascinated by it when I learned about it in Norway during a conference. So, you know, instead of going to court, you have these mediators, arbitrators, so that, you you know, you have a chance of being heard instead of just having 30 seconds in front of the judge. So mm -hmm. I found it very interesting and I just wanted to learn about it. And Pepperdine was the best university for that. So mm -hmm. I applied. Uh, the first year, my dad was like, oh, I don't think, you know, I don't think I want you to leave. So I, you know, I didn't take the opportunity. And then on the second year, I applied again and I got a full scholarship. So he had no way of saying no. You know what I mean? At that point, yes. it was like, hey, I already have my money saved. I know if I need money, they are going to give me the money. You know, because <laughs> were always, when it comes to education, they were all the school. They just wanted me to learn and be educated. You know, it was a very traditional way of growing up. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, here's the, you know, the paperwork. I got a scholarship. Uh, you know, I just need to pay for my accommodation and, of course, living expenses. Um, so he was very sad, you know, obviously he was like, you know, I don't want you to go. He was sick at the time as well. Uh, he was going through this six year of, uh, having cancer. So he was like, you know, I don't really, I'm not sure I want you to do this. And I say, Hey, it's going to be nine months and I will be right back. And I moved here. And then seven months later, he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. And yeah. It was actually, it's an interesting story not to get a little, you know, personal about it, but, uh, yeah, on Christmas was my first Christmas that I spent without my parents in a long time. And come January, he, he, he sent me a text and he said like, Hey, I miss you dearly this Christmas. When is your spring break? And I said, Oh, March, you know, 9th to March 15th or whatever. So he bought me the ticket on January 5th to, 
to go visit him in March and he passed away 24 hours before I took the plane. Oh. So I literally arrived to his funeral. Yeah, that's a true story. Oh. That was crazy. How was it growing up in a big family? I've got six kids myself. So how was it with having eight siblings, seven siblings? It was amazing. You know, it was amazing. Like whoever says otherwise is not true. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very different. You get used to dealing with different personalities and different people. And I think it like overall, it like, you know, makes you a better you because a again, every single one of my siblings is different. With some of them, I, I get along very well. With some of them, I, you know, I don't really need to see them more than once a year. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> so, well, again, you know, it's just, it's just learning to deal with different personalities, which I think is a huge plus for anybody. So you're in the U.S. You're an attorney. You're like, deep down, this is not what I thought it would be. This is just great. I understand law. When did you get your first taste of multifamily? Because you're going out there doing real estate residential listings. When yeah. was it that, like, there's this vehicle out there? And I think a lot of people in California don't, know about it because there's a lot of single family homes and they get onto HGTV and they see all the crap on the shows and the thing Good fixing point. and flipping. What well, about multifamily? Common occurrence, common occurrence that can happen. And so every time I would, you know, list a single family house, you know, and I would get a little personal with the homeowners, especially when it comes to, to, you know, high, high end listings, you know, multi-million dollar homes, they all don't uh, multifamily real estate or they were somehow some way involved in it. Oh, like mm. that's a little project here. Maybe they had four, maybe they had five. And I was like, okay, I mean, first of all, they are buying these properties. Some of them, very few people really build them. A lot of people buy like retail, meaning like, you know, the product just ready and stabilized. Uh, you know, they look at the, at the cap rate and that's all they care about. Some people buy location. But, you know, there was a common occurrence that all these people with money had, you know, passive income. And it's not necessarily passive income. I don't mean necessarily cash flow in every month because again, sometimes, you know, you lose money the first five, six years or you don't really make money. Uh, because you believe in, you know, the long run of the asset. Um, but I was like, okay, there is definitely something here where I could be selling them instead of one property a year, maybe five or six properties a year. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what piqued my curiosity. And then eventually I met, um, you know, two brothers who are from New York, uh, known developers in LA. Uh, when I say known, I mean, you know, in, in the development sector and they are medium developers. They don't build 500 apartment buildings, 300 or 200. We stick to anything that's anywhere between, I would say, you know, two to two to 250 units. But we have right now under construction 42 of them. And, you know, I help manage all of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, they that that specific family bought of me 26 deals last year. So, wow. you know, I realized that there was a huge opportunity for that. And how I got in the business, you know, I was like, hey, here's a property that I think I think is a good asset. Uh, it was obviously for land value. It was a single family house and they were like, okay, like, why is this a good asset? So then I started, you know, connecting with architects and kind of learning about zoning and setbacks and easements and encroachments and all this fun stuff. And I was able to put a deal that makes sense for them. They bought it for 625. They built four units. Once it was built, um, I helped rent the four units. Actually, right now one is becoming vacant, so I'm going to be renting it again. Um, and that was the first of many. And that's how I started. And then word of mouth. You know, when, when you're selling something to, to, to somebody that people know, they start calling you and asking you for deals. Mm. So, that's Gino, I got to jump in here for a second because it sounds like she's working a lot harder than brokers in the Southeast. And, <laughs> and I want to, sure. and, and I've actually been fascinated in trying to unpack this the entire time. So I'm going to, we're going to play a game right now. I'm going to tell you what I think you're doing, and then you can tell me if, if it's correct. I or like not. games. Let's play a game on the yeah. show. All and, right. And, and I'll tell you, like, so, you know, and, Look, this is the first time we spoke, whatever. So Gino and I are obviously, we, we own apartments in the Southeast. And we, we, we buy a 100-unit complex. We renovate it and hold it. That's sort of what we do. The brokers find an asset that someone wants to sell, you know, built in 1980s. They sell it to us. Like, that's what they do. They, they, they don't do much more than that. Some, <laughs> some of them do, right? And I'm not hating. I'm just saying that's typical, you know, broker transactions. Well, that's 99% of, of realtors. Yeah. Right. And so it, it sounds like you identify a piece of land or an asset, look to redevelop it potentially, work with the new ownership throughout, and then you lease it out after that. Yes. So it, it sounds like there's a, a there's a lot more going on there than here it is, I'm going to list it and give it to you. It sounds like you're very hands-on throughout an entire process and actually involved in the re redevelopment. Is this is this correct in, in terms of what I'm hearing and, and elaborate if there's more, please? Yes. And the reason for that is, is the opportunity that comes with doing all of that. 
So yeah. not only I get the listings on the way out or the sale, obviously, you know, like right now we have a property in North Hollywood that I sold them the land. When I say the land, I mean a single family house. There is very little sure. land in LA, but you just buy single family homes. Uh, they bought it for a million too. It was like, you know, nice piece of land, 9,000 square feet. Uh, we demolish it, build six units. Now I'm selling it for 4.2 million. I'm putting it on the market this week. So again, I help with blue tape when the property is built, go there, touch ups, dealing with, you know, HVAC, whatever needs to be done, lead the city, final inspections. Do you get paid for that part of the process as well? No. That's, that's a lot of uh, extra service but, and work there. Yeah. But the good thing about it is they are like loyalty goes both ways. Sure. So when they get, you know, uh, they get it. Obviously, you know, they, they are growing their business. I'm growing mine. But at the same time, you know, if, if you're a little bit of a savvy realtor, you know how to identify who the buyer is when you yeah. have someone with so much business. So they try, you know, calling them, selling them deals. And the first thing they do with any realtor in the city of LA, which is not, you know, it's not a city with, with a very few realtors. We have a lot here. Send them deals. They send it to me directly. And they're like, deal with this person. Review the I deal. love I love this so much because to me, that's the definition of a growth mindset. And so many people you interact with nowadays don't see the bigger picture. You see the bigger picture and that's why you're doing that. And it makes sense for you. So many people are like, are you paying for me? Are you paying me to do that? Are you doing it? And it's like, they don't yeah, see. I had this conversation with, uh, you know, I, I, I just joined another uh, firm. So I'm not at the agency anymore. Yeah. Um, I just joined an, a different one because I was able to have my own DVA uh, that yeah. I've been working on for a very long time. Uh, it's called Bartira Group. That's that's the name that you know I, I just uh, came up with. Bar from my name Tierra in Spanish means land, so Bartira Group. Um, I'm planning, you know, building my team and doing a bunch of fun stuff. But I was talking to this guy who's you know younger than me, but he's doing really well in the commercial sector, and he just get a lot of off-market residential properties because they have cold callers out of the state. So, you know, he, he met me last week, we had a great conversation and he was like, Hey, like, you know, I, I know that you're very hands-on, like I can tell that, you know, what you're doing, like, have you thought about your, you know, time value of money, opportunity cost, all these things. And I was like, listen, I appreciate everything you're saying and I'm aware of it. It's not that, Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, sure. for me, this is an, uh, this is an opportunity to not only like that. my clients, it's an opportunity to learn the business. And uh, separate you know, yourself from the pack because the, the rest of them, I'm going to start saying hateful things, I but yes, you're doing the right the thing. Biggest value propositions that I have to my clients this day is uh, everything that comes with dealing with like new CD ordinances, like the SB8. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, SB8 basically they, it changed the, the 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 landscape of development like like 180. It's an absolutely crazy thing that happened in LA last year. So as of January 1st, 2022, uh, you know, traditionally speaking, 2021 and, and the years before, everything we cared about was the zoning, what the property is zoned for, and the size of the lot. With that, you could figure out how many units you can build by right. Mm -hmm. Now that landscape has changed. So with this new SBA, if you have a property on, on, on site that's existing, that has two bedroom, and it's tenant occupied, and they made the income that they've made for the five last consecutive years is under, even if it's just one of the five. Uh, one of those years is under the medium income for the zip code, the city has a schedule, then you have to designate one of your new units to low income, meaning that in, in a two bedroom, instead of getting 3,500, I'm going to get 700 a month. So as you know, that kills the cap rate. And, and obviously we're looking probably at about $200,000 less for mm -hmm. the same property. Wow. So it's a very complicated thing, not just the process, but also the application it takes, you know, the, the turnaround for the housing department is about six months which of course we can do faster escrows as we used to do 30 day closings. Um, however, you know, again, because I've been doing it for with the city for about three years now, and I had a good relationship with them before my turnaround for this thing is about five to six weeks, which is something that very few people can offer. So that's how I'm able to do two, three month close, you know? So. And what Jake is talking about, I know sometimes Jake gets a little aggressive with brokers, but let me reframe what he's trying to say. It's a low barrier to entry to get it becoming a real estate broker. You take 22 okay. hours, you get in there, nobody's there really training you. The Remax is the world. I mean, the uh, Keller Williams is the world. They have really great trainings, but not a lot of companies have great trainings. So you get in and you're really there selling, but no one ever tells you how to provide value. If you're listing a house, you should have a list of contractors. You should have a list. You should be able to walk them through that closing. And how are you providing value for that 5% or 6% commission that you're going to get for the house? They're not being thought of and they're not being 
programmed to be entrepreneurs. They're thinking of just yeah. as being salespeople. That's the real difference. And unfortunately, it's not 80-20, the Pareto rule. It's the 95-5 in real estate because when times are really good, you don't really have to do that much. You put a house on the market and two weeks later it sells. But as things yep. slow down, now there's a lot more inventory. There's a lot less capital to be invested in. And now they have to go to work. And the ones who have been able to build their business and have been through a couple of market cycles understand how to deliver the value. And that's what Barbara has figured out at such a young age within her first market cycle is how do I give Jake over there value? How do I create value for him? I don't have to charge him on this one, but on the third and fourth deal, possibly he's going to have a deal. He'll call me before anybody else gets the opportunity, and that's how I get paid. I'm deferring the gains today, and it's like investing in multifamily. You may not get paid today, but if you hold the property for three, four, five years, by year five, you're raking it in. So it's really adopting that mindset. And you know, for you, how else are you providing? Or if I'm a real estate agent on here listening to this, how do I build my book of business? How do I provide value? to my clients. Well, you ma you mentioned a, a very good point. So when you get your license, again, it's, it's a very, you know, the, the requirements are very basic. Uh, not only brokerages don't teach you like how to run your business or how to do your business, they they also don't really teach you how to uh, source leads. Like, like they don't mm -hmm. really teach you anything when it comes to real estate. So, you know, that was one of my struggles when I first started until I met literally one agent on the street that, oh, like this thing called Volcan 7 or Mojo, which are you basically just systems that you pay two, 300 a month, uh, which back then I was like, oh my God, $300 a month. I had to pay for this cold calling thing. Better be worth it. You know, if I, <laughs> if I close one deal, it's going to be worth for the year. But yes. you know, like, like, like even those simple, basic things like that, like they, there is not really like a set path where like, you know, you get your license and then they teach you how to get leads. And once you get the lead, they walk you through the process of you know how, what is an escrow to me escrow was amazing i mean we don't have escrow we don't have third-party escrow companies in europe like it, it was such an amazing concept so i had a very hard time understanding what escrow was you know <laughs> mm -hmm. a little bit like that but again you know it's, you just have you just have to learn so one of the things that i'm doing right now with you know the thing that i'm building right now i don't think i don't think there is any secret to what i do I think you just need to be consistent and you just need to you just need to want it enough to the point that you understand that you have to invest time and resources and 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 get to where you want to be. So for me, every single agent that I'm training, I have three junior agents that I've you know been training consistently. Uh, you know, they are they have the opportunity of their lifetimes and I'm still paying them for their time, which is something that no other agents does. I pay them a very small hourly rate. Uh, and I have them, you know, lead generating and walking them through the business and my all the paperwork that I do in my business. Um, I want listen. This is a this is a people's business. There is no way I can succeed in this alone. This is very simple. Like there was a time earlier this year, no, well this year, not last year. There was a time earlier last year where I had twelve escrows going me myself and I, and I was really overloaded because all those escrows, you know, require attention. This is not oh let's just you know sign the paperwork and walk through the escrow and we'll get it done. Like, you know, my clients want to negotiate extensions, price reductions, you know how developers are. So, so I have to go through all of that. So, you know, it was very difficult dealing with those 12 escrows and that's what I had to hire help. And I, you know, fired more people than I kept. <laughs> and that's just a fact because, you know, they, they think they can they can do it. And, and when they realize that this is an everyday job, they just run, they run away. Mm -hmm. So my value proposition to other agents is if you want to make it in real estate, you want to learn about multifamily and you want to get to where I'm at in, you know, a short period of time. Uh, call me. Let's let's have a coffee. Let's talk about it. Let's see where your goals are. And if I can help you, I will help you. And if I can't, I will tell you. That's it. I have two more questions before we go to the short answer. The first one to you, Barbara, I like you, you call them assets. What is an asset to you? Like what kind of assets are you focusing on for your investors? So right now we're buying, uh, we're, we, I mean, we've changed the concept and the model of what we do. Uh, when I say what we do, I mean, you know, me and my, my, my primarily two, three big clients, uh, we used to, to, to do mainly multifamily. So townhouses, duplexes style, put two, four, six, however many we can put. Uh, very important to say, we do not build what you can build by right. We do not maximize the density. We maximize the dollar. So if it mm. makes sense to financially, you know, build one duplex less because of the cost of construction and, you know, how things fluctuate and rents and this and that, then that's what we do which, you know, today has has been a very good, uh, you know, path to take. <laughs> we haven't mm -hmm. we haven't lost money in any deals, which is, again, something that we can pride ourselves on. Um, 
that being said, we are also looking right now into building affordable housing. Uh, that's becoming a very big thing in the city of LA. We have several of those going. Uh, timeline for construction is longer. Time for, for like plans and permits is longer and the construction is way more expensive. Um, but again, they are they are cash flowing beautifully, like way better than the multifamily assets. That's awesome. And for me, the last question is you could be in Madrid right now during mm -hmm. siesta, having an espresso, hanging out, having the nice easy life, but instead you're in LA dealing with jerk contractors, traffic, <laughs> smog, a lot of stress, building a business. And Why there's a zombie population this? growing from the streets. <laughs> Is. What is making you, what is making, what is driving this? What is, as Simon Sinek likes to say, what is your why? Why are you doing this? For two reasons. One, because I was born and raised a certain way, um, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and I want to, you know, give myself that same life that I had growing up with my dad when, you know, I used to go to restaurants and never until I was 25 and I moved to LA, I'd look, I looked at prices. Um, and, you know, I, again, some people may not like hearing this, but that's just how it is. You know, I grew up that way and uh, I appreciate the things that come with that life because when I moved to L.A. and, you know, my dad passed away and I told my mom, don't worry, buddy. Uh, I didn't really know what I was saying, <laughs> 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 you know, and then I went I'm on. I'm sure your dad would be very proud. I went on I'm in sure two years. Very proud. Of, I, I think so. I hope so. But, you know, like the way I grew up is the way I want to like continue to live my life. And, you know, the ones to come after me, that's kind of like the plan. And then obviously I always felt that I had to make up for, you know, that moment that I wasn't there when my dad passed away. Um, and I think that as, as I keep accomplishing little things in my life, like, you know, a month and a half ago, I bought my first property by myself outright. I got a big, big loan, um, but I just bought four units in Hollywood. So I own my first four doors, as we would say. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. So I'm, you know, I'm very proud of those little accomplishments and I just want to, you know, I just want to be successful. I want to make money to invest in real estate. Again, I like buying purses and doing stuff like that, but I do that, you know, two, three times a year. You can only buy so many. <laughs> then I don't use them. So, <laughs> so um, I just want to make money to invest in real estate. I want to have a, a great portfolio. I want to help people make money because there is a way to make money in multifamily real estate in the city of LA, as opposed to what 90% of people say out there in the internet. That is not true. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's my why. Thank you. I know that there's a, uh, a market for these purses a few years down the road and some people view them as assets, but I think <laughs> your direction going into the, you know, the townhomes or whatever you just bought is probably a lot smarter. So let's just, yeah, let's just keep it I, I, I agree with you. I don't think, I mean, yeah. I don't know if there's a market down the road and all these companies that are trying to resell these things are great, but I mean, it is, what it is. <laughs> can only pull so much value, you know? That's right. That's right. Let's take a quick time out here from our sponsor. Now we have had a great run in multifamily going from zero units to over 250 million in assets. That's over 2000 apartment deals that we've been able to purchase through our framework, buy right, manage right, and finance right. Now Jake and I, we created the Jake and Gino community back in 2015. We launched our first book, Love Our Profits. And since then, our students have closed over 60,000 units. That's over $4 billion in assets they've been able to close over the last six years. And that's why this community has been so successful. We call it results-based education, and we pour back into the community everything that we've learned on our journey from zero to 2,000 units, and all our systems and scale that we use on our very own property management and investing company. Jake, I love that. It's not just education, it's implementation. So what I want you to do, click on that link down below, apply to work with our team, see how we can help you on your journey multifamily all right we are back and uh this is my uh section where i i, I guess i'm gonna bash on california a little bit um <laughs> so it's 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 your, your home state now and for myself grew up in new york okay just you know full transparency gino grew up in new york i left for tennessee gino left for florida and that's when we started our investing careers and and there was serious economic benefits from doing that. And I'm just going to say it like this. I don't know that California deserves your work ethic and hustle. I, I think there's an, and, and Gino, it was funny because he was, he was joking about Madrid and things like this. Have you ever considered the Southeast or some of these other places where maybe there's not a state income tax and you could actually 
grow more wealth, be more successful with less regulations and restrictions and all the taxes that come with, with LA, because that was a big reason for my exodus, you know, from New York. So have you considered that or maybe a Miami, or, you know, or something like that where, Hey, they're not going to make it as hard on you from a, a governmental regulation standpoint. I mean, not really. Because the way I the way I look at it, I'm a very risk adverse person. I, especially when it comes to investing my money and my clients' money, we know which have, at the end of the day I vouch for for their money. You know, they are investing millions of dollars with me. Um, I know the LA market. I don't know any other market. But uh, you know, just looking at cycles and those fun fun things that people you know like talking about. Um, high highs, low lows. So Miami is great. I've been to Miami recently and it's absolutely insane what they are doing there, how much money they are pouring into all these projects. Uh, I'm scared for them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it otherwise because I am. I mean, when I see all these people invest hundreds of millions of dollars in Miami, like, like, I don't know where this is going. Is they are creating a bubble the way I look at it. And my concern with other markets, not California or not LA specifically, California is very big, but is, is that, you know, we're very consistent. Like, you know, the market went down right now when the interest rates went up. We were looking at the 10, 12% down, but, you know, all of our deals are still made, you know, very, very good profit. So I know this market. I don't know any other markets, but my main concern, again, has always been high highs, low lows. Like all those markets go up, go down, and they fluctuate a lot more than, than Los Angeles does. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a very steady I don't know. Of I don't know about that. You know, because you see some highs. Like I, I feel like the the coasts, and and I'm I'm insulated a little bit. I'm you know in, in Tennessee. You know, I I think if you see like back to 08, you know the run ups were were typically on the coasts, and then and then, then the deep depression, then and then the run back up. So agree to disagree, but just just think about it as as your career develops. I I think there may be you know uh, other opportunities Again, out I'm there open, for you. I'm open to you know I'm open to 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 learn. I don't think any other state, maybe New York, I'm not sure, but I don't know if any other state is more complicated than LA. Like they really make it difficult on us. You know what I mean? <laughs> they that, really that, that's my po that's my point. Where you could go yes. somewhere else and your life probably gets a a, a lot yeah. easier with with less uh, you know. And I like Barbara, the returns, I like the returns. I would stay away. I, this is me personally. I would stay away from Miami. But what I would say about Miami is when Jeff Bezos is moving there, when all the hedge funds are moving there, there is all the Wall so, Street money is already there is plopping, so yeah. much capital moving there. That's right. It's but there's opportunities in North Florida. There's opportunities in the central part of Florida. It's a behemoth. The demographics show that people that are older are moving there because of the weather. We have a $21 billion surplus in the state and we have no state income tax. So as long as the as long as long um, the government continues to run the way it does, we'll be okay. If we sort of flip, then it may be an issue. But the way it's being run currently, it's really well. But I agree with you. There's certain – Miami is absolutely – there is going to be a boom and bust. I, I'm not disagreeing with you on that one. Yeah. I mean I have a few, a few friends who are like have, have been. Uh, you know, for the last 10, 12 years, developing in, in Florida, in like mm. North Florida. And, and, you know, I mean, I don't know how else to say other than they are printing money, literally. Mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. They yes. buy this, like, you know, they bought these big pieces of land, subdivided the land, and then they are building these small homes that they build for 130 and they sell for 220. And yes. they are selling 20 a month. It's mm -hmm. absolutely insane. They are printing mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So now I'm helping them lease a $75,000 per month house. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Finding, finding your place. So, <laughs> so if I heard you correctly, you're recruiting uh, people to join your team right now. Is that, is that right? Yes, always. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what's that look like starting out with you? You, you sit down, you talk about it. I mean, what, what's the, uh, what's the, the path look like in the beginning for these people? So it looks like, you know, it, you're going to learn as fast as as much as you want to. So I'm, you know, I'm not opposed to people coming with me in the car and driving around with me when I will, you know, when I go to these construction sites or when I go to the housing department or the city or all those things, like you're going to learn as fast as you want. The most valuable thing to me right now, and, you know, obviously the, the way they give me value is by uh, helping me with all my paperwork, my emails, like making sure that I don't miss a thing. Like, you know, having my timelines uh, written down, contingency removals on all my escrows. Stuff like that. So again, I can explain to them what an escrow is. I can I can explain to them how to find deals, what looks like a good deal. 
um, everything I really ask in exchange is for them to to remain loyal to me for as long as they can. They are going to make money and they are going to learn. So, I mean, other than that, they're going to learn. They're, essentially, you're going to teach them the business, though. This is this is yeah. the type of education that people actually make money from, not some you know silly degree in you know some kind of art history studies or something like that mm -hmm. yeah like i want to listen i i need again i can't do this alone like you know i'm i'm i understand that I, my business is a people business not just when it comes to my clients but when it comes to other agents there's a lot of value in partnering with other agents who you know are hungry and they want to hassle and you know it's, it's it's just a great value proposition for anybody who's looking to learn about real estate like learn about this aspect of real estate this is the actual you know one that's going to give you 30 40 50 checks a year uh, again, I I just started collecting passive income. I'm not going to really be cash flow positive for, for, for a little bit until I refinance. Uh, but when it comes to like my income, you know, I have guaranteed income every month pretty much with all the projects that I've been a part of that I have lined up and all the commissions that I'm making as we call on the way out. Like, you know, I'm, I could I could lay back and, I'm, and be fine for a couple of years if I wanted to. Uh, yeah, I don't see you doing that though. <laughs> I'm the pipeline here. is full. <laughs> the the, the, the pipe is full. Yeah. <laughs> um, what project are you excited about right now? Well, the one I purchased, I'm remodeling two of the units. Um, oh, so now you're 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 doing the design work as well. Is that I'm hearing that? Or? Yeah, like I mean, not major remodel. <laughs> it was already not not major remodel, but I'm just kind of like personalizing it a little bit, and I get sure. a little bit more you know emotional even with the contractors. I'm like, come on, put un poquito de amor, you know, like like put a little bit of love into this one. This is my own, you know. <laughs> so 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 definitely seeing a different side uh, when it comes to to you know doing something that where I have my own money invested. Uh, but honestly, it doesn't change much for the way I treat, like, you know, my clients' projects. Like, you know, the only reason I'm able to do this is because of them. You know, if they didn't trust me and, you know, they didn't let me use the resources, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So, so definitely that Such one a great is a outlook. Problem. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, like, again, it's, it's very valuable right now. I just closed on a two and a half million dollar house in Culver City representing buyer and seller. So that was a four and a half percent commission. It was nice, sweet, sweet, quick deal. And... It was, you know, when I closed, the girl was like, hey, I need a painter. I need an electrician. Uh, you know, I have this problem with the city, like a code, code enforcement violation. Sounds a lot worse than it is. It's very simple. Uh, but basically because there is electrical in the garage that was not supposed to be there. So she's like freaking out. And I'm like, I got it. Easy. Let me deal with it. You know? So, so I, I again, it's, it's just a great value proposition to learn about all these little things. I have access to all these contractors. Um, so that one that I'm doing myself, that one I'm very excited about. And then I'm very excited about a couple affordable projects we have going up. Uh, they are, you know, they are going to be cash flowing significantly. And, you know, as you guys probably know, like with affordable housing is uh, state money. So the 80% of the rents are covered by, by, by the government regardless. So, you know, it's kind of guaranteed income. Um, I'm very excited for two of those. There was one that we purchased that was the Chinese restaurant and a house next door. And we bought the whole thing. Uh, we demoed both and uh, we we're building 26 units. Um, and I had the police out there a couple months ago because, because you know, we get squatters all the time on these little houses that are vacant. Uh, and I had the police out there and I was telling them so excited. I was like, you're not going to believe what we're building here. We're putting 26 <laughs> units, affordable housing. I'm getting people off the streets. And they, and they got the girl, the police officer goes, oh my God, this is terrible. I go, what do you mean? I go, this is great. He goes, first of all, the people who are in the streets want to be there because there are a lot of like shelters here that have like a lot of open capacity, but they just don't want to be in by eight or they don't want to drink or they don't want to do drugs. And when you're telling me about 26 units, what I'm thinking, and this is what the police officer told me. And I found this so interesting. She was like, you are putting 26 people with a hundred different personalities each. So we're going to be coming. They're going to get calls at the yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because 26 people with 100 different personalities. Is, so I know where I'm going to be spending the next few months. I was like, that's oh. your job, oh, man. When, when you actually get the real, real, that's, that's what I'm talking about there. So. <laughs> Crazy um, stuff. I mean, only this property is really it's incredible. The whole real drama that goes into dealing with with the squatters, and I mean, you know, it's it's just really crazy. Like like we have had instances when you know people like overdose in the properties. It's really bad. Yeah, it's really bad. Sure. It's crazy, crazy stuff that yeah. happens out here. Um, but again, you know, when when I've been approached by you know big big TV providers to do shows about real you know real estate, and I'm like, okay, like let's 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 narrow it down. What is it that you guys want to see exactly? Because if it comes to construction and what what we do is amazing, you know, it's it's really fun, and there's you know of course a drama side to it, as I was just explaining. 
but then they went out like getting into my life and i'm like i'm I'm not into that you know what i mean it's like old I school, went out- gina it's old school yeah i like that yeah i don't i don't again like i'm a businesswoman and that's what i want to do like 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 what i do with my life um who i live with and, and what i do for fun doesn't really matter you know what i mean you can see yeah. me out and take a couple of pictures you know with my friends with my boo whatever it is you know it doesn't matter but but there is a lot of real drama in real estate in la a lot like mm-hmm. like endless so i think that's something people that people, people, people for whatever know. reason don't want the real stuff they they everyone's nosy and interested in the other stuff and that's, that's i think that's they the would thing. be interested in that though yeah i don't think yeah. so yeah i mean because they know it like south la for example like by usc which you know one of the best universities in the world is in south la which is incredible i i mean i was like wait wait south la south central compton and you have usc i mean it's incredible how in how Props, like proximity to to like all these you know not so good areas that's where mm-hmm. we're building all these you know affordable housing projects and and well to me that was amazing by the way like i don't know if like most people around the world knows that but you know if i didn't live in la like i don't know if i would ever send any of my kids to usa yeah. just the location that is it in like i i wouldn't <laughs> you know? back to the the thing about the hgtv the I'm not saying that people wouldn't be interested or reality TV or whatever in the construction end of it. The The point that I'm making is this last weekend, and then you may not follow the NFL at all, probably not, you know, not growing up or maybe you do. I don't know. The big story from the weekend was the backup quarterback for the Bengals. His girlfriend had this like very risque white bodysuit on and this little fluffy hat. And, and that was like what was going a buzz on social media and like the different networks. Meanwhile, there's teams playing for the playoffs and all this stuff. And it's that kind of stuff that people are gravitating towards. So I think that's what you're up against with some of yeah. this stuff. And, well, that's you know, again, that's so. not, of course, not to go crazy into like any cultural, you know, political stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah. It, is, it is true that that again, I, I read those stories. That's great. That's fine. It's, you know, just to take yeah. your mind off. But when it comes to like the everyday, I also think that people are not informed. Like if they were to know all these things that happen throughout the city of LA, that way a lot of people are aware of them because they live in these areas and they know. Yeah. But when you are talking about figure on 77th Street, everyone knows that's, you know, I mean, I don't know how to say it nicely, but that's like the hooker's corner. You know what I mean? Like, like, like that's not where you want to buy real estate unless you're building affordable housing. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, so there are just like crazy stories that go into all of this and, and you know, people know me in South LA too as the girl with the strawberry Porsche. I have like an orange Porsche and like, they know me like that. And it's incredible the amount of gangs that you have down there. And like all these things, like it's, it's, it's just insane. Your like, show's more for like crazy. HBO or something where it can get a little crazier, I think. <laughs> Listen, it can get, it can get really crazy. I mean, when I go down to these, some of these construction sites and I see this guy in a bicycle and he drives back, he's like, KB, KB. I'm like, Hey, what's that? Everything good today? Any problems? I'm like, no, 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 okay, 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 okay. Well, if you know, you you call me blue, blue, okay, blue. I'm like, okay, fine. Like, there's so many gangs, and they are nice to me. You know what I mean? Like, but 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 this happens in every house, like the 77th Street, the 80. I mean, it's insane. They like this is not like the you know not like the old days. I'm not talking about the old days mafia. You know what I mean? That that was something completely different. These are street gangs, and you just have them in every block. It's insane. And that's why I don't live in LA, and that's why I live in St. <laughs> Augustine, Florida. Well, I guess you're a, different you're a young looking girl and they're nice. Like, so <laughs> All right. So uh, folks listening right now, if they want to work with you, they have properties, et cetera, or maybe they're looking to break into multifamily in LA. Uh, what is the best way for folks to get a hold of you? Um, reach out via email. Uh, you can also find my, my phone number on my Instagram as well. I have like a link tree. Uh, if you go on there and you click on there, you can you know access all my pages, Facebook, Twitter, all of that fun stuff. Again, the phone is always better. If I don't answer right away, just shoot me a text. Um, I'm pretty, you know, with good my turnaround response. And um, yeah, that's that. And the handle is Barbara Isabel? Barbara Isabel, one second. R-E. I think R-E. I think I changed it, yeah. Barbara Isabel R-E, like real estate. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> All right, Gina, take us home. Barbara Isabel, one of eight children. Her dad was an entrepreneur. She moved from beautiful Madrid, sipping espressos, going down to South Africa. (laughs) Yes. Well, I'm just assuming, hanging out in Madrid and saying, I'm going to move to L.A. She moved to L.A. eight years ago, go to college, become a lawyer of all things. She becomes a lawyer. And I think it might have been a little soul-sucking, but a little bit of not what she wanted. And I think ultimately getting into real estate and working really hard and living the life of real estate and understanding 
and really diving down into why she's doing it. One of the reasons why is she is continuing the legacy of her father. And that's what it comes down to. The money's great. The lifestyle is great. But when you drill it down, I think all of us have to understand why we're doing something. It's not just real estate because she could pick up and go into any other business and, and, and do the same thing. The hard work ethic, the ability to think outside the box, the ability to defer money coming in today and saying, hey, let's build a relationship. How do we create relationship and how do I give you value and how do you give me value? These are a lot of the things that her father taught her and continuing the legacy through real estate is what she's going to leave this planet a better place, Jake. Excellent. Barbara, thank you so much for your time today. Gang, as always, we believe in buying deals for the long term. Think in decades. I'm Jake. He's the G-Daddy and we make it happen. We'll see you next time.